What is going on everybody? This is Gabriel Jones giving you a drop of sun any chance I get. And today we have a brand new album from Jack Harlow called Jackman. Looks like we're returning to a rapper who's in a very confusing place in hip hop right now. I remember releasing my album reaction to Come Home The Kids Miss You about a year ago. And while I had a lot of hype for that project, I ended up just finding it okay with just a handful of tracks I returned to like Churchill Downs and Parent Trap. A lot of you don't remember those takes because the video underperformed like nothing else on my channel. <laughs> but now I've prepared with a better light source, a better camera angle, and a much better wardrobe. As you can see, I got the Tyler Hero merch on, so you know that I'm ready. To focus on today's record, a lot of rap fans were surprised that Jack was coming out with new material, even though it was just a year after he released that sophomore LP. And given the lukewarm reception on that, people were not too thrilled about what he had coming this time. They were even mocking the cover for looking too silly, with him crossing his arms, shirtless. But in a surprising twist of events, the album has been getting a lot of positive feedback online. People were even describing certain tracks as heavy, like something that you really need to prepare yourself for, and I'm like, Wow, so this must have something really special going on. As someone who genuinely wants to see the guy succeed, I think Jackman is gonna be a very interesting journey. And a very short one as well, because it's only 24 minutes. Makes my job a lot easier. Of course, before we dive in, I wanna advise everyone to leave a like and comment for this video because the more engagement the video receives, the more likely YouTube will pick it up in the algorithm, so I thank y'all for that. And be sure to subscribe and hit the bell because I could use all the support in the world and it will put a huge smile on my face. All that is out of the way, and now we are getting into Jackman. Track number one, Common Ground. Mmm, kind of monologuing to himself at the moment. Yeah, frat boys can be a little bit <laughs> frantic, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, trying to bust a move, you would say. Pajamas, kind of a weird pronunciation there, but okay. Mmm, you know, there's just something very incredibly laid back about this, you know, something authentic in the sound, you know? Ooh, maybe a little uh, Macklemore shout out right there. <laughs> okay, so that was Common Ground, and yeah, that one is a very interesting opener, I gotta say. It's a song with no chorus, it's just two verses and a little bit of an opener. And yeah, I really like how um, simplistic this is. We get the backup vocalist doing the thing while Jack is spinning his rhymes and, you know, just really laying down the lyricism. Some of these lyrics, I will admit, they kind of just, you know, flew by me and, you know, I definitely believe they have some weight to it, but I might need to read into them a little bit. Okay, so after doing a little bit more research, there seems to be uh, some commentary in this track about the divide between white kids and black kids in various neighborhoods. How white people are given a lot more privilege in life and, you know, get to like go to college, you know, presumably because their parents were able to pay for it, because they had the money to it for it, while black kids aren't able to see as many opportunities as, say, their white counterparts. Even in this song, there are some comments about how white kids really, like, envy black kids to the point where they try to be like them, how, like, you know, white girls try to twerk like black girls, and how a lot of, like, white guys really want to have the ability to say the n-word and not face any repercussions for it. There's even an acknowledgement that white people love to sort of, like, play judge when it comes to, like, examining black music, like, how they grow up to be journalists and comment on who they think is the best rapper, you know, who's authentic and who's phony. It is interesting to hear all this coming from Jack since he's made a real effort to, you know, engage with and interact and understand the culture and, you know, now he has built himself up as this huge rapper in today's culture. And to be honest, I think those are themes that I definitely need to keep in mind when going through the rest of this LP because they may pop up a little bit more. Track number two, They Don't Love It. This, I believe, is the lead single for the new LP. And I haven't listened to it, but I know that if Jack released this as the first single off Jackman, then it must have enough quality to it that he really wanted to push it. <laughs> Is that why you went shirtless on the uh, cover? Mm, you got her hips, you know. <laughs> 
yeah, you know, keep your mental health intact, you know, don't listen to what people say about you online. Okay, so that was Jack Harlow, and yeah, this one, I gotta say, is pretty damn good. It's Jack displaying a level of confidence, how he's really made a name for himself in the scene, and how he's very thankful from where he came from to where he is now. Really thankful about the family that he was able to grow up with, you know, his dad, his mom, and his siblings, presumably. I believe he has siblings, I'm not sure. But yeah, I like the vibe that this track is going for. And so far, the two songs we've listened to, it really feels like it's a lot less luxurious and glamorous as, say, Come Home, The Kids Miss You, where it felt like, you know, we were just listening to this album in, like, a hotel room or something. With Jackman so far, it really feels like we're taking the whole thing back to his roots, you know, something that's really, like, on the ground level. On this song, Jack raps about how he's the best white rapper since the guy who rapped about vomit and sweaters, uh, presumably referencing Eminem. I remember when uh, G-Eazy did the same thing on his song, Calm Down. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, Jack's gonna meet the same fate as G-Eazy, you know, date a famous pop singer and then get blasted in a song about how he cheated on her, but... <laughs> I think that it's kind of interesting how he's sort of claiming this title, you know, now that he's sort of re reached the status that he has. I'm not sure if Jack is going to have the same longevity as G-Eazy, we'll have to see. But yeah, I really like that Jack is, you know, displaying a level of confidence, you know, rising up over his peers and, you know, creating something that's defiant, you know? <laughs> I'm sounding like a politician with that monologue. Track number three, Ambitious. Yeah, I remember your old, two, your old YouTube videos that you used to record. <laughs> mm, I mean, you you were eventually playing with some basketball players, my dude. <laughs> you more than achieved that goal. I mean, I think you've been able to work it, you know. Definitely got something going on there. Bieber or Timberlake? I'm curious to know which. Yeah, he looked at the uh, the reviews of uh, Come Home with Miss You. Not good. Okay, so ambitious. Uh, yeah, this song is pretty easy to follow um, when it comes to the uh, lyricism. It's sort of Jack chronicling his journey as a rapper and, you know, all the hard work that he put in to get to where he is today. Acknowledging some of the faults that came with it, but then, you know, rebounding from them and, you know, becoming even more successful than he was as a 14-year-old or a 19-year-old. Again, he has to be sampling a classic tune in order to make this song because I can tell very clearly that this is not an original mix. But yeah, I really dug that song. I thought it was pretty tight and uh, Jack had a sort of like a laid back flow to it. You can tell that he, you know, took some elements from Come Home, The Kids Miss You and sort of like sprinkled them onto this song, Ambitious, uh, because, you know, it is a song about, you know, looking back on his success and the journey that, you know, led up to it. But yeah, I think this is pretty neat, so uh, we can just move on. Track number four is I. I had to use my black side in order to pronounce the title, but <laughs> we did it. I mean, are you, what, you're not shooting for 11, my dude? <laughs> yeah, you know, like, just treat him as, like, a normal person that's just, you know, walking in the street, minding their business. Mmm, I kind of like this, uh, piano, the way it's mixed, you know? It kind of reminds me of Alicia Keys. Okay, so, is that I? Alright, so, uh, that is an interesting track, I gotta say. Again, it's a very short track, which I appreciate, makes my job easier. Here he's talking about how he doesn't want to be too materialistic, and he doesn't want too many cars, not too much jewelry, he just wants to keep it real, you know? He just wants to, you know, be treated as like a normal human being that's out in the open, you know? No cameras or anything, or else he'll pull a bad bunny on your ass. <laughs> and yeah, it just feels like he's really thankful that he's been able to achieve such a great lifestyle. He has a wonderful fan base and a great uh, rap career, and he wouldn't trade that for anything. Props to Jack for remembering to appreciate all that he's garnered in his life. His very young life, if I may add. Track number five, Gang Gang Gang. Mmm, he sounds very fatigued on these opening lines. Okay, yeah, we are in for a very serious story. Oh my god, this is like Jesus Christ. Yeah, you know, 
you have to like cut those ties even when it's like very painful when that sort of stuff surfaces. Okay, so gang, gang, gang. I was definitely not prepared for what he was gonna rap about. I knew people were saying that this was a very serious track, but I didn't anticipate that he would rap about, you know, sexual assault or sexual abuse. Abuse that came at the hands of people that he once deemed as homies. You know, this guy I used to be friends with, it turns out that he's a you know, this guy I used to be friends with, it turns out that he's a and you know, you can hear in the song that he's having a lot of trouble processing this information, this newly found uh, crime evidence. He's asking the other person, wait, you mean that guy we used to trade Pokemon cards with, that guy whose dad's a reverend, like they did all this horrible shit to innocent people and now they're getting charged for it? And he's like, yeah, that's, that, that, yeah, like that's our Marcus, our Kevin. And yeah, it's really interesting to see the angle that Jack is taking this song in. It can be very hard to cut people out of your life after you've learned that they've done something completely unforgivable. You spent years building a relationship with them and you know having personal connections and whatnot and then the news comes out that they have a bunch of girls or a 10 year old and when you disassociate from them it can be very hard but necessary and Jack is sending that message to his fans about how it's very important to hold your friends accountable and emphasize when they've done something so bad that you just can't be with them anymore it's especially important since he does have a lot of young fans and a lot of women who really support him I respect him for ensuring that he aims to keep his fans safe because he knows that they come from a lot of age groups, a lot of young age groups, and there's a lot of female listeners too. I'm almost having a hard time just forming the words to give about this song because it's just hitting me with so much. There's just so much weight behind it that I just can't really like put into words like what to say about it. It's just so like heartbreaking honestly but yeah that's what i have to say about gang 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 a very important song that jack thankfully put on this record so we can just move forward now track number six denver okay we got a really calming sample at the moment mm, yeah that could like really like start to weigh in your brain a little bit Yeah, his self-confidence is sort of being stunted a little bit at this point. Nice! I like that. Uh, sort of like uh, the contrast between two verses. Mm. That's kind of like a poetic line. I like the uh, play on words there. Mmm, that last line, I gotta say, is something that I really like need to like sink my teeth into because it's just so poetic. Okay, so that was Denver, and yeah, this one is a very interesting track, and I gotta say, I love the way it's structured. Track one sees Jack Harlow struggling mentally because he keeps uh, watching videos and reading articles, sort of trashing his music and his persona, and it's really weighing on him at a certain, after a certain point. There are times where he needs to like seclude himself from his pals because he just doesn't feel good about himself especially when he's walking down streets and he's wearing all this luxurious jewelry and he sees a bunch of homeless people and he kind of like has that guilt weighing on him. In verse two, Jack reveals that he's doing a lot better now. He wrote the first verse like months ago and now he's in a much better state. He's talking with friends again and he's sort of like telling himself that, you know, don't listen to the critics because, you know, they don't know the real you. You put a lot of effort into your craft and, you know, don't let some silly blogger tell you how valuable it is. But he still kind of has that dark shadow lurking after him because it's like, oh my God, what if these people are correct? You know, what if I am not living up to my full potential and I'm just, you know, wasting air? Dealing with depression and anxiety feels very much like that. You know, even if you sort of like work on yourself and like, you know, end up bettering your mental health, you know, sometimes you will still have that sort of cloud just hovering over you at moments. For a lot of people, depression doesn't just happen once and then it just goes away forever. You know, it's something that you really need to work on for years in order to really like, you know, master. Again, I really like the way he uses the sample in this song. I don't exactly know where he sampled it from, but I think uh, even without that knowledge, he was able to incorporate it very swiftly, very swell. I like this song very much. Uh, this is gonna be a fun one to revisit. Track number seven, No Enhancers. Mm, I love the percussion on this song right here. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you know, like that sort of banter from Jack Harlow. He's come to know it and really like to laugh at it. Mm, appreciating a lady. I respect that, my dude. You know, 
It's underappreciated, but I really like these background vocals. You know, I think they do a lot to add a nice little touch. Okay, so that was No Enhancers, and yeah, this one is another well-crafted song. Here we see Jack rapping about his lady, his girlfriend, uh, his love interest. And he's talking about how he loves her so much that he doesn't, you know, need to see her, like, you know, enhance her body in any sort of way. Presumably that's about, you know, like, getting surgery, and honestly, he just likes the real her. He understands that this woman has been going through a lot of struggles in her personal life, and that he just wants to do his best to sort of, like, improve it. Maybe not exactly be her savior, but just do the best he can, you know, do everything that he can in order to, like, you know, make her day a lot brighter. And that includes, you know, sending her funny texts and whatnot. I do kind of like the uh, R&B influence on this tune, you know, with the backing vocals, and I really like the percussion. I think the percussion does a lot to stand out here. Yeah, this one is a really good one. It really puts me in a bright spirit. Track number eight, It Can't Be. Okay, I'm really liking the, I'm really liking the tempo on this one. You know, it kind of gets me into a groove a little bit. Mm, kind of giving himself credit for all the effort he's put into his rap career. You know, that self-confidence, we're seeing it now. Paying homage to the legend. Yeah, South America, they really do love their music. I mean, just look at Coldplay. <laughs> oh yeah, referencing that little uh, controversy he uh, found himself in. But then, you know, sort of like... Okay, so that was It Can't Be, and yeah, that song <laughs> does a lot of interesting work when it comes to the lyrics. This song displays a lot of sarcasm when it comes to the chorus and the verses. You know, Jack is sort of questioning why he became as successful as he is. I mean, Jack is kind of saying, well, obviously it's the color of my skin. It can't be the fact that I worked really hard on my music and kept the same friends for many years, and I'm very respectful towards my fans. It can't be any of that other than the fact that I'm a white dude. Jack acknowledges that he does have some sort of privilege when it comes to entering the music scene and how the industry likes to push certain artists more than others based on skin color. But Jack is smart enough to give himself credit for all the effort he's put into his own career. Again, he's made a genuine effort to engage with this culture that's been predominantly black for decades. And a lot of people do give him his props for that. On Denver, we were seeing Jack struggle to sort of like build up that confidence for himself. But here, we're able to really see it shine through. So. I like the uh, little art that he has going on here. Track number nine, Blame On Me. All right, we got yet another sample I'm not familiar with. Okay, somebody tells me that we're about to enter yet another serious track. Yeah, like it gets really awkward when you enter like a new school and you know, sometimes your friends disassociate from you. Perhaps it's talking about a sibling, maybe a brother. I got so much wrong doing to confess to, and you act like it never happened. God bless you. Hmm, you know, trying to make amends, you know, build, uh, rebuild those bridges, perhaps. And the way you treat your little brothers, how my older brother did, and now I'm not even my brother's friend. Mm, kind of like, you know, taking a step back and realizing some of the mistakes you made while raising your kids. Okay, so that was Blame On Me, and yeah, this song also, once again, is very cleverly structured. What we seem to be looking at here is a song where Jack is rapping from the perspectives of three different people. The first is a younger boy who is pissed off that his brother uh, started treating him differently once they got to junior high school. And he's sort of like blaming himself because I didn't grow thicker skin and maybe if I did then he would respect me more and then we could be buddy buddy like we were when we were little kids. And then in the second verse we get the perspective of the older brother or perhaps Jack himself. And he's talking about how like, you know, I understand that as the older brother, dad was a lot harsher on you than me and you know, perhaps that I could have done more to sort of like treat you better so that we, you know, we can keep that special relationship going and you know, maybe you can put the blame on me because I wasn't as responsible as I should have been. And then we get the perspective from the dad where he's talking about how like, you know, I tried to discipline you because I wanted you to like, you know, have some respect for your elders and 
You know what, maybe I'm not exactly doing the whole parenting thing correctly. I only treated you that way because that's how my mom treated me, you know, your grandmother. And, you know, me and my brother, we would fight occasionally, but uh, it seems like it got so ugly that we don't even talk to each other anymore. As a result, I'm putting a lot of blame on myself for not being the best father I can be. And honestly, I should have done more to try and understand you guys. If anything, you can almost picture these three sitting in a circle at home, you know, trying to like hash out all their pent up feelings and, you know, trying to reach an understanding of some kind. I'm not entirely sure if this is the household that Jack grew up in or if he just created some characters that he could like, you know, write a story about. But this is very interesting to listen to. And I really like the mood that it sets with like the sample or I don't even know if it's a sample. But you know, it does a great job at making the song feel murky and serious, you know? That's definitely something he was going for and I appreciate that from him. And now it's time to get into the final track in this very short LP. Track number 10, Questions. You know, constantly asking himself, you know, why I make the choices that I do, you know, sort of second guessing myself. Mm. Yeah, you know, what if all this hard work was just for nothing? That would like be such a letdown, like a big life failure. Oh, I'm wondering um, what sort of accusations you are. Perhaps cheating? Okay, so that was Questions, and yeah, kind of an interesting uh, song to end the uh, record with. Jack sort of has all these questions running through his head, you know, like, am I good enough for the culture, you know, was I a good enough brother for my siblings, you know, uh, should I, you know, side with my homie and these allegations that his girl is throwing at him. There's so many questions that are being asked in this song that I just can't run through all of them. But it seems to be everything that Jack has been sort of getting at here, you know, reflecting on his life choices, where he's gotten to now, and whether or not he's good enough to keep moving forward. Has his hard work paid off in the sense that he can still top charts, make millions, build good connections in the industry, and, you know, maybe even, like, create anthems that people can, you know, rap to for years to come. As he continues to age throughout his 20s, these are definitely good questions to ask himself, you know? It's almost like he's going through a quarter-life crisis of some kind. I don't know if I would call this my favorite song, but it's definitely something that really fits with the whole theme, the very serious theme of this LP. Um, and yeah, it definitely, I can definitely see why he uh, chose to end the entire album with this. With that, I'm gonna take a break, I'm gonna let the album sit with me, I'll listen to it a second time, then I'll come back and give you my final thoughts, so bear with me. Alright, I am back and I'm ready to give you my final thoughts on Jack Harlow's Jack Man. One thing about Jack Harlow that fascinates me is how he's one of the first rappers to utilize social media to build himself a big time career, especially given his cultural origins. Even though he's only been mainstream since 2020, you can easily follow the adventure Jack has been on with these three albums. That's what they all say was Jack watching himself take off into the mainstream. Come Home the Kids Miss You was him soaking in the success he achieved. But Jackman was him reflecting on how his career shaped him as a human being, and where the path will lead to next. It does feel like the reception of his last record seriously got to him, given how he mentioned several times how bad it is for him to look up his own name, and the reviews for his music. Jack wanted to prove that he can stand for something greater, rap about something that isn't just fame. That's why we see him devote his songs to topics like racial inequality, sexual assault, and generational trauma. Jackman relies a lot more on sampling than his previous two releases, giving the songs a real authentic feeling. I'm not able to pinpoint where each sample comes from, but he used it very keenly in this project. My biggest gripe is that his pronunciation of certain words can feel a little bit forced and take me out of the vibe, but that's something I'm able to look past. It's unclear how big this album is going to get, but I can see the effort Jack put into it, and I'm eager to see where he's going to go next. I give Jackman 4 out of 5 stars. My favorite songs would have to be It Can't Be, Blame On Me, and Is That I Hate. My least favorites would have to be Questions, They Don't Love It, and Ambitious. And that just about does it. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this album listen. It was very interesting, very serious at times, but I hope you all really enjoyed yourselves. If you want to follow me on social media, be sure to check out my Twitter, my Twitch, and my TikTok. The links are going to be in the description. And that's where we're going to wrap up for today. My name is Gabriel Jones, and the sun may be setting, but I hope you were able to soak up those drops. Take care.